The battle between media giants over the future of video streaming services ratcheted up today. As John Yang tells us, the Walt Disney Company jumped in as companies are spending tens of billions to try to lock in your entertainment dollars. It's part of our ongoing series on arts and culture, Canvas. A highly anticipated new Star Wars spin-off, The Mandalorian, was today's debut offering of the Walt Disney Company's new streaming service, Disney Plus. But the launch of the latest entry in the intensifying streaming wars was not without glitches. Users were greeted by long loading pages and error messages that Disney blamed on higher than expected demand. Disney Plus boasts programming from across the media giants' brands, Marvel and Star Wars movies, Pixar animation, Fox TV shows, and classic Disney films. The introductory price, $6.99 a month. Disney enters an ever-growing field. The part you guys never seem to realize is that you don't have the power anymore. And frankly, I've let you bozos handle this long enough. Earlier this month, Apple jumped in with nine new programs on Apple TV+, Plus, spending about $240 million alone for two seasons of The Morning Show, starring Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, and Steve Carell. More new shows and original movies are expected in coming months. Two more newcomers are to debut next year. Are you ready to see something different? HBO Max from AT&T's Warner Media will offer all of HBO's content and NBC Universal's Peacock will include longtime favorite NBC shows like The Office. They're all taking on long established rivals. Netflix and Amazon Prime both have vast libraries of content and tens of millions of subscribers. They should have never given us uniforms if they didn't want us to be an army. And Hulu, also controlled by Disney, has made a name for itself with shows like The Handmaid's Tale. One big question is how many of these services consumers will pay for. Monthly fees vary from about $7 to $15 a month. TV critic Eric Deggins follows all of this for NPR. He joins us now from St. Petersburg, Florida. Eric, thanks for being with us. What's going on? Why all these streaming services starting now? I know, what's going on? People are drowning in television. Uh, well, there's a few different things going on here. Uh, firstly, I think uh, there's a lot of media companies that don't want to miss out on the streaming revolution. They realize that this is a major way that people ha are choosing to experience television and they want to carve out a piece of that um, uh, medium and they want to control it. So um, in the past, um, they may have sold uh, reruns of valued shows to Netflix. Um, the Office and Friends and Big Bang Theory and shows like that. But they realized that that was making Netflix very powerful and allowing Netflix to control a huge corner of the TV industry and, and, and dictate terms in a way, how much shows are worth. Uh, and so some of these companies have decided to pull back uh, those episodes and build streaming services around them so that they can control their own platforms, they can control their own piece uh, of this of, of this medium, and then the other reason is that um, it's it's a part of some of these media companies' strategy uh, to to lure customers into a universe of media products that are all connected to their company. So for Apple TV Plus, uh, if you if you get involved with Apple TV Plus, it encourages you to become a part of the Apple family. So you, maybe you watch it on an Apple iPad or on an, or on an Apple laptop. Uh, maybe you use Apple software in order to engage it. Maybe you buy an Apple TV device in order to watch Apple TV Plus original programming. It, it makes you a part and connect it to the company in a way uh, that you otherwise wouldn't be. Are we seeing a shift from cable to streaming in the same way that years ago we saw a shift to cable from over the air? Yes, uh, without a doubt. I think uh, I've talked often about what I call on-demand attitude amongst consumers. People want to have a TV content when they want it, where they want it, how they want it. 
And, and cable TV offered more flexibility from broadcast television. You could see more things and there was more chance that you might stumble on something that you wanted and then some cable systems gave you some on-demand programming. But streaming gives you even more flexibility. You can buy smaller bundles of channels. You can buy services that are directly tailored to the content that you're interested in. You can start and stop those subscriptions with a few clicks of a mouse uh, button. And, uh, and, you, and you get content uh, that you can watch on your phone, that you can watch on your iPad or on your laptop, when, whenever and wherever you are. How should consumers think about navigating this new marketplace of, of streaming services? Well, you know, uh, I did a piece for NPR.org where I talked a little bit about this, how you can pick the streaming service you actually want. And one of the things you have to do, I think, is be honest about what you watch. I encourage people to do, you know, how uh, some nutritionists tell you to figure out a dieting diary to see what you actually eat, write down when you have lunch and dinner. Well, I expect uh, that you should write down what you watch on television. Don't try to guess what you watch, uh, but, but actually write down what you watch. So when you watch those Law & Order reruns, be honest about what you watch. And then once you have a sense of what you're watching uh, day to day and week to week, then you can cobble together a strategy uh, for what kind of streaming services will get the most of what you want to watch. Now, um, you shouldn't be shy about trying some services and dropping them if they don't work. You can, uh, a lot of services have a week uh, free trial. Sometimes you can try them for a month. You pay six or seven bucks and you get a month's service. And then you can drop it if it's not working. Uh, you know, we're used to, in the past, having these TV structures that are pretty permanent. You know, you, you put up an antenna or you buy cable service or you buy Netflix and then you don't do anything else and you just experience whatever that platform delivers to uh, your, your home. But now you have more control than ever as a consumer. It means you have to do a little bit more work. You have to do some research. You have to figure out what you want to watch. You have to figure out how much you want to spend on these streaming services and then you have to try them. But once you put together an ecology of media outlets, You'll be much more satisfied with the media that you're consuming, and I bet you will spend less money. Eric Deggins, TV critic for NPR. Thanks very much. Thank you.